Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I would like to welcome you to the seventh lecture in this series of lectures on research methods. Before we go into the discussion of qualitative methods, we need to spend a little bit more time, one more time, to find out the difference between quantitative and qualitative research methods. In quantitative research methods, we focus on collecting objective set of data. We employ different types of research methods, for example, surveys, experiments, simulations. And once again, we want objective data. For example, if we ask someone for gender, it will yield an objective answer. Similarly, in qualitative research methods, we focus on collecting subjective information. We might not have a lot of numbers to crunch in this type of research method. And data is mostly in the form of spoken or written words, images, impressions, or even gestures. Some of the examples of uh, research methods that belong to qualitative uh, research include interviews, case studies, content analysis, observations, natural experiment, photography, ethnography, histography, sociometry. For example, if we ask a question, what role information communication technologies are playing in the socio-economic development of Pakistan to different people, we might get different answers. So, we ask that question to different people with a varying degree of expertise and backgrounds. Uh, these are experts, these are end users, regulators, stakeholders, or, or even uh, people who are having independent opinion. And we do an important thing. We carefully record everything. This recording could be in the form of audio or video. But we have to make sure that we record everything in natural sequence. What socio-economic benefits is the progress in ICT sector yielding? Variety of socio-economic benefits of ICT utilization in Pakistan are appearing. I'll give you a prime example of the ready availability at fairly reasonable cost of the mobile phones. Mobile phone is transforming the way people interact with each other. Readily available mobile phones in schools, to headmasters, headmistresses, teachers, and students are making it possible for the young learners to interact with the teachers. And that, to me, is a quantum leap in terms of the educational change that one sees in Pakistan. What socioeconomic benefits is the progress in ICT sector yielding? Interestingly, in Pakistan, uh, ICT, meaning information and communication technologies, is the component relating to, to telecommunication has grown tremendously over the last 18 months uh, after the market was deregulated and uh, with the proliferation of uh, mobile phones um, throughout Pakistan, there are almost 45 million of them and the fact that the cost of calling has gone down to uh, almost less than uh, what used to be the cost of a local call. Uh, you can call uh, New York at the same charge as you are calling across the room. Uh, the cheap communications and proliferating this throughout the rural areas has had tremendous benefits uh, not only in um, making life easier for people, uh, stimulating the economy in a sense, stimulating businesses, saving time in traveling and uh, on, a, on a social aspect it is bringing societies and families together like never before. On the IT side, uh, the results are a bit more diffuse. One of the reasons is uh, that we've gone through the cycle of hype when the bubble burst and everybody thought that IT was the, uh, probably the savior of mankind. I think it's settling into something more uh, sensible now. Uh, you go to supermarkets, you go to small shops in, in, uh, in the cities and you see people are using inventory management, you're using barcodes, uh, you're using uh, labor saving devices and things which are making the economy a bit more documented than it was before. Uh, people are more aware of using ICT or using computers 
especially since these proliferate in the houses. It has had tremendous impact on education, for instance. Um, children are, are far more aware than beyond what they're taught in the classrooms. So a bit of the dichotomy in or, or the lack of good curricula is in part made up by what children learn on their own. Uh, they have the ability to feel a bit more independent, ability to create, ability to learn things which the teachers perhaps are not often uh, suited uh, to be able to teach them appropriately. So it has had a very, very broad and a wide ranging impact. Um, older generations have to learn how to use the computers in order to be able to communicate with the younger generation. The younger generation is so prolific in its use that now I think it's important that uh, they are channelized. But like everything else in life, there are uh, tides in the affairs of man. Um, in, in this particular case, I believe uh, small policy changes can bring about tremendous uh, benefits of, of ICT at the grassroots. Telecommunications has transcended um, the ability or, or the ability of the monopoly to be able to selectively give communications to any place they wanted. Uh, now, because of wireless communications, uh, people are not location bound. So that's the first major impact. People feel a bit more empowered. They can communicate better. They, can, they have the ability to uh, use these as devices for social cohesion, for uh, getting work done, cutting down traveling times, be, being a bit more aware of what's happening, finding out, for instance, uh, earlier times when people used to tout ICT for finding uh, farm to market uh, times being shortened, ability of the farmers to get to know what's happening as far, as far as rates are concerned in different parts of the country. Uh, this now becomes uh, less of a structured thing and more that the people feel empowered to be able to do these things. That's the first thing. The second area is uh, the ability of the government to use, to create certain useful projects rather than, you know, pie in the sky. Uh, I mentioned, for example, uh, especially with the rural areas, land or land records in Pakistan is, is one of the most difficult things to handle. This is a part of the whole feudal culture, a part of uh, a fifth, almost a 400 year old record keeping system. It forms 85% of all court cases, all the backlog uh, litigation in Pakistan is due to lands. Now over the last few years, few companies have evolved software and Rahim Yar Khan, parts of Lahore, Gujarat and all these cities, these provinces and these, these districts are slowly being converted to electronic records. And the minute these things are in place, it will take a few years, it, there's obvious resistance, but these are grassroots impact. Land records, for example, will enable farmers to use land as collateral. Uh, you could take title insurance on lands and be able to transfer lands from one to the other. I would see in the next four or five years a huge reduction in cases relating to property. Then the whole issue of politics. Uh, you find that uh, people who are educated with IT, the, with computer knowledge, with the ability to use this as a tool, um, stand a better chance of getting jobs. Interestingly, earlier people thought you used to study IT and you had to become a computer engineer. Not so. Now you can be a doctor and be very, very proficient in, in IT. I meet young people. The other day I met a young uh, singer, a very popular singer in Pakistan. He's running a very, very high-tech, uh, non-linear editing um, studios. He is using technology to its ultimate. Now he's an artist. I didn't expect him to talk of bits and bytes and all the complex issues that relate to very high-speed processing. But he knew that because he had studied it. The younger generation, and if you're aware, 80% of Pakistan is less than 25 years of age or 23 years of age. Now, this is a huge challenge and a tremendous opportunity. If we are able to continue in, down this path, the government, not due to direct intervention beyond the fact that they should intervene in the rural areas, they should make broadband come right down to the grassroots have the ability of people to use this broadband 
internet as it is known as they don't have to go and search on google on websites there's a lot of intercommunication which will take place between communities between cities and a new objectives of the government and what the government especially in the telecom domain is bringing about are things like the universal service funds and telecommunication actually funding tele centers in the rural areas these will be areas places where people can come to learn to get information to use the internet and a whole variety of things on the administrative side um lots of people that's a very interesting thing it's not as if you can do it by fiat by you know the president saying thou shall do this it's probably not happening like this the younger csp officers or dmg officers or people who are more aware know this and are selectively applying it and you see these pockets of excellence springing over all over the place and i think when uh, the older generation retires and goes away and this younger generation finds its feet you would have a huge base of people who are it literate who are able to use these despite the fact that they may be uh, traders or people studying architecture or computer science or or film making their abilities to use this whether they are in the rural areas or in the urban centers this this equality with time will disappear but this is the only area where you need policy interventions what socio economic benefits is the progress in ict sector yielding in order to answer that question first we have to understand what are the changes that have happened on the ict landscape in pakistan over the last few years uh, pakistan had a reasonably all right fiber optics terrestrial infrastructure as far as communications are concerned but the overall outreach of the telephony system was very minuscule cellular operators were few and the service was very expensive two or three major decisions taken by the current government have impacted the ict usage and therefore the socio economic scenario in pakistan the first one was the introduction of a calling party pays regime in cellular communication that substantially lowered the cost of a telephone call and suddenly people became empowered more cellular companies came to pakistan and the biggest benefit was to the consumer because of the competition uh, we've got a huge cellular base which has far outstripped the fixed line base in telephony number 2 the government also uh, put in place parksat 1 which is pakistan's first telecommunication satellite it is situated at 38 degrees east almost on top of nairobi and it has a huge footprint from northern africa all the way over to bangladesh and then northwards covering most of central asia with that communication satellite in place it became possible to start using icts for education and for the dissemination of information now these two parallel efforts one was satellite communication and the other one was the explosion in cellular communication or telephony combined with the use of the internet and where does the internet come in the fact that most of pakistan's exchanges were already on fiber almost 99.9% of all exchanges right now sit on a broadband fiber optic uh, network combined with the fact that we introduced new international connectivity through cmv3 and then further uh, fiber optic lines meant that pakistan was suddenly connected to the outside world the overall cost of communication in fact came down uh, dr- quite dramatically uh, at the turn of the millennium the cost for an e1 line was close to 86000 dollars which means a 2 megabit line uh, cost this phenomenal amount in pakistan right now as we speak it is probably less than 2300 dollars so you can see how uh, the the price or the cost of communication has plummeted if you put all of these together the ict empowerment what happens is that you've got a socio economic benefit that is accruing to the population at large uh, everybody has a cell phone in their pocket from the street vendor to the push cart vendor uh, in fact i can give you specifically from a, a socio economic perspective a very interesting example this is from a little town outside of lahore in shekhupura I have actually seen this in place a push cart vendor a person who actually services several shops by carting their goods from one place to the other on a human powered push cart he has a cell phone in his pocket simply by using the 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 feature of a distinctive ringtone 
he has programmed his regular customers each having a, a different ringtone. All the customer or the shopkeeper needs to do is give this guy a ring. The person does not answer the phone. He simply recognizes the ring and says, uh, recognizes that his services are needed in shop A, or B or C. So he just walks over and carts the good and make goods and makes his money. Now, and it's, it costs nobody even a penny and it is based on ICT, a very innovative use. Uh, let's cross over to slightly more se uh, serious areas. Along with cellular telephony, we've also introduced the wireless local loop, which meant areas that were previously deprived of fixed line communications have now come into the communications picture. Over the same WLL, uh, internet connectivity is possible, very seamless, very affordable, very convenient, which means suddenly the entire country is connected to the internet and therefore to each other as well. And the fountains of knowledge, which is really the, the, the humankind's knowledge is stored on the internet right now, is now available to people at their fingertips. In terms of education, the major impact has been the, the delivery of very high quality, affordable education to every nook and cranny of the country. What happens to kids when they study in their own hometowns? In, a, in, in other words, education at their doorsteps. It means they do not migrate to the big cities to get education. The migration had a downside, which meant that if a student came to a, a big city, 90% uh, would stay on or they would move on uh, maybe to even a larger town or leave the country in search of um, you know, better job opportunities, etc. But the hinterland from which these students originated would never benefit from this education. By using distance education and using ICTs to deliver it, what we're doing is that we've got world-class education being delivered to every corner of the country. And then after graduation, if a student decides that they want to set up shop, I hope and we assume that this will happen, many of them will do so in their own hometowns, which means there is an economic benefit that will accrue from this education right where the student is located. This is only possible through ICT. It is not possible through the conventional mechanism of traditional education unless we were able economically and financially to, be, uh, to establish universities in every little town and district of the country. And that still means we have not tackled the, the, the problem of the faculty shortage. So ICTs, I believe, are a serious, serious contributor to the socioeconomic well-being of the country. What socioeconomic benefits is the progress in ICT sector yielding? So in my view, there, there are two aspects to the questions. One impact on the so social system of the country and then on the economic system. In the social system, the availability of telecommunication, for example, is, pro is improving the national productivity in terms of the involvement of different segments of the society, especially the working classes like plumbers, like electricians, like mason, like carpenters and all those categories which never had access to telecommunication. Today they have very, very good access to telecommunication by way of the availability of the mobile phone services at much reduced and affordable prices. Number two, in terms of uh, access to the information, people are having now more access to information. They get information more quickly from the websites which is available as part of the e-governance systems. So it is the process is taking time and it is natural that uh, to bring a big social change in the system, it always takes time, but uh, I think the change has already started. Empowerment to the citizens, empowerment to the poor, empowerment at least, especially the gender, uh, the discrimination, the gender is perhaps we are bridging the gulf. And now the women particularly are now, they are, they are having more access in the social system they are being more empowered, they are they have connected, they are being feeling connectedness and that way it is having a good social impact on the society. W and this is resulting into creation of a lot of new job opportunities. So employment, especially in the case of the educated manpower of the country is improving. On the economic front, once the ec economic activity is increasing, the productivity of the labor class, the productivity of the workers, the efficiency of the performers, both in the corporate sector, in the government and in private sector, 
So it is bringing about a total change in the structure, though it is a long time taking process, the reach of the service is still limited. But we think that the beginning has already started and the impacts on the society, both in terms of social system and the economic systems are positive. What socio-economic benefits is the progress in ICT sector yielding? Uh, the socio-economic benefits are on a number of uh, areas. First, let me talk about the social benefits. First of all, just like any other country in the world, uh, the greater use of the internet has empowered people with knowledge. Uh, their participation in blogs, in uh, uh, various uh, discussion groups has uh, you know, increased their comprehension of the areas of interest. Uh, but also I can tell you, for example, in Pakistan, uh, the Ministry of IT has launched a uh, uh, e-govern program, uh, one, one of those uh, constituent projects is e-justice where uh, uh, different defendants or accused or stakeholders in the legal system can see the status of their cases and the schedules of uh, hearings uh, on, on, on the internet, on the website. So this uh, brings convenience uh, to the people. Similarly, the president and the prime minister have uh, published their email addresses and people can uh, you know, write to them directly. Uh, other than this aspect of uh, empowerment uh, you know, of, of, of the masses, so as to speak, women, I think the empowerment of women uh, through um, uh, IT is significant. In the IT industry in Pakistan, for example, uh, it employs uh, over uh, or around 30 percent uh, women uh, in its uh, workforce. So, you know, that is quite a significant number and, uh, uh, you know, results in women's empowerment. So I think socially, uh, you know, I, I would like to focus on those two areas. Economically, of course, the benefits are tremendous. Um, uh, IT in Pakistan is becoming the engine of growth of the national economy. Uh, we have seen exports grow at over 50% a year over the last three years, which is a growth of uh, over 300%. Uh, domestically, we've seen a growth of uh, over 30% a year. Uh, employment uh, creation, direct employment uh, creation uh, in the economy today as of uh, end of the calendar year 2006 is almost 100,000 uh, IT professionals and uh, indirect employment particularly uh, for the uh, IT professionals employed by the IT industry itself which is about uh, 35,000 indirect employment is at least another 35,000 so you know economically there are multiple benefits also in the area of foreign exchange earnings where uh, formally declared earnings uh, are small, uh, roughly about uh, $75 million, but a lot of IT revenue comes in through personal remittances, and that figure we suspect is at least uh, $300 million. So you saw that different people had different type of answers, and we did not stop them. We let them say whatever they wanted to. Okay, now, once we have that data, what do we do with that data? We have to follow the following steps. We need to organize and manage that data. We have to read and memo that data. Sometimes we need to transcribe that data. We need to write down whatever was said. And then we need to classify and define categories and patterns within that data. We look for unifying themes we count the number of times a word is repeated. We interpret that data. We draw logical maps or diagrams. Look for new ideas. We represent or visualize that data in different forms. So today, we discussed difference between quantitative and qualitative research method. We talked about major types of qualitative study and we had a demonstration of interview type research method and we talked about what do we do after we have collected that data. This concludes our today's lecture. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum.